Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to Total War Warhammer, and this time I'm going to be giving you a full rundown of the army roster for the Dwarves. While the Dwarves are efficient and resilient melee combatants, with some of the best leadership and defensive capabilities in the game, they also have amongst the best ranged units, with fearsome thunderers, quarrelers using crossbows, and of course, some of the best artillery in Total War. I had an absolute blast playing the Dwarves for my run through on the long campaign. I'm going to be sharing with you all of my experiences and giving you some tips and tricks on how to use and not use the different units for when the game is released. So firstly, let's take a look at all of the Dwarven heroes. And this is the Slayer King, Ungrim Iron Fist. He's armored, armor piercing, and specializes in melee combat. Ungrim Iron Fist provides excellent unit bonuses to your surrounding dwarves, but he's also very proficient by himself in melee combat, often felling multiple foes with a single swing of his axe. However, if Slayers aren't quite your thing, then maybe you'll prefer High King Thorgrim Grudgebearer. He rides into battle on a throne carried by four dwarves, and trust me, he is very efficient at taking on hordes of non-armored opponents. However, Unlike the Slayer King, he's not so good against well-armored opponents, and he's not as good against large opponents. He has less melee attack, but much better melee defense. The Dwarves also have a couple of heroes available to them. This is a runesmith who uses magic runes to give buffs to his allies and also to be able to damage his opponents. There is also the Master Engineer who is capable of engaging his opponents from afar, which makes him quite novel as far as heroes go. However, he is also quite proficient in melee combat, as he gets out a Warhammer to smite his foes. So now let's take a look at the Dwarven infantry, stout, strong, and resilient. It takes a lot to kill a Dwarf, and they can dish out some great punishment in close quarters combat. Their only issue, of course, is that they're rather slow, and so they can be outflanked by their opponents, and it's very hard for them to chase down a routing foe. So firstly, let's take a look at the Dwarf Miners. They've all got pickaxes, unsurprisingly, and I just love the candles on top of some of their heads. Dwarf Miners are special because they get vanguard deployment, so unlike these Dwarf Warriors that you see here that have to deploy within this yellow starting area, the Miners can deploy outside of it. So if you're so inclined, you can get stuck into the battle very, very early. But don't be too bold because the Miners are actually relatively weak for melee troops and so they're best used for scouting out for your artillery at the beginning of the battle, or trying to set up an ambush. But remember, dwarfs are very slow, so they're not going to be able to run away from anything. Now let's take a look at dwarf warriors. These are your standard kind of dwarf. They're armored, they're shielded, they're highly resilient for such a basic unit. And they also have a useful charge defense against large opponents, and that's very useful, because let's face it, you're not going to be able to get out of their way as they chase you down. There is also the option to equip great weapons, weapons on your Dwarf Warriors, as we can see here some very large axes. This will make your Dwarf Warriors much better at taking on units that have very thick armor because they gain armor piercing. However, be careful because their melee attack actually falls down from 22 to 20, and while they do gain a charge bonus going from 9 to 16, they also lose a third of their melee defense because they no longer have the shields of the standard Dwarf Warriors. Dwarves are renowned for their ultra awesome facial hair, and just check out these long beards who are basically just an upgraded version of your Dwarf Warriors. They're more heavily armored, they've got more health, they also have a leadership bonus, but they're slightly slower. They've got much better melee attack, much better melee defense, better weapon strength, and they also get a better charge bonus. But the speciality of the Longbeards is the fact that they are old grumblers. Respected for their great age, superior courage, and the length of their facial hair, long beards have an encouraging effect on their allies. And so if your general is absent for whatever reason, then the long beards can encourage them to keep fighting at their maximum capabilities. For my playthrough of the campaign, I found the long beards to be absolutely awesome units inside the dwarf army, which I tried to replace all of the dwarf warriors with as quickly as possible. They're amazing at holding the line against vastly superior numbers, taking out multiple foes before they fall. And also Stat for stat, the Longbeards are quite economical, not requiring that much gold to be able to maintain them. Like the Dwarf Warriors, you can also get Longbeards with great weapons as well. But once again, you sacrifice their defensive capabilities to be able to gain armor piercing. Now let's take a look at one of the most well-known units inside a Dwarf army, and those are the Dwarf Slayers. Dwarf Slayers have a plume of 
of orange hair and they've taken an oath to strive to find more and more dangerous opponents before they meet a grisly demise gloriously on the battlefield. Slayers have a few very useful aspects to them. One, their leadership is very high, so no matter what enemy they face, they're not going to really be running away from it. Two, they fight until the death, and actually as they get closer to death, they fight more vigorously. They're also super effective against large opponents such as this Vargolf here. And they're also the fastest of the Dwarven units because they forego all manner of protection and armor to be able to increase their speed and increase their vigor and ferocity in combat. Here we can see that a single unit of Slayers has managed to be able to slay an entire Vargolf and it hasn't even lost a quarter of its units. However, be very careful with Slayers because if you rush them into infantry, they're going to die quite quickly because they have practically no protection at all. Although they do have an ability to weld their axes, which allows them to mitigate some of their vulnerability to ranged units and get into combat with hopefully the large counters that you're looking for. Now we're looking at the Hammerers. These are the most hard-hitting of all of the Dwarven units. They carry gigantic Warhammers. They're well-armored, but they're also armor-piercing, and they're a fantastic damage dealer. While Hammerers aren't quite as resilient as many of the other Dwarven units, they do dish out an unprecedented amount of damage, and so when you need to get the job done and cut through the enemy lines, then use your Hammerers wisely. And as we can clearly see here, when the Hammerers engage in equal numbers, even against the toughest of the Orc forces, the Black Orcs, they finish on top pretty much every single time. However, if playing defensive is more your thing, then look no further than the Iron Breakers. These are some of the most heavily armored units in the game with 120 armor and 66 melee defense, which is absolutely awesome. Now, while the Iron Breakers aren't the fastest unit with a speed of 27, and they also don't really do that much damage in melee combat, unlike quite a few of the Dwarven units that we've looked at, they're just so darn resilient, and you can hold positions unlike pretty much any other unit in the game. However, that's not the only reason why Iron Breakers are special. They also have a short ranged attack, which devastates their opponents before they're even able to get into melee combat. However, don't expect the Iron Breakers to have very much ammunition. It's only pretty much got about two or three uses per dwarf. But this can be very useful, as we can see here, at just putting a little bit of pain into the opponents before they manage to get into close quarters combat. As we're going to see here against these savage orc biggins, that frankly, unless your enemies have armor-piercing capabilities, your Iron Breakers will just weather the storm and then slowly grind them down. And when they try to run away, well, they're gonna firmly regret it because the Iron Breakers have still got that ranged attack. The Iron Breakers are frankly some of my favorite Dwarven units. They're absolutely awesome at protecting artillery, and they can also dish out some pain in melee combat as long as they're not dealing with opponents that do have armor-piercing capabilities. And these savage Orc Biggins certainly don't have that. Now let's take a look at the Dwarven ranged units. Firstly, the Quarrelers. These are Dwarves with crossbows. They're fairly long range, and they're also very effective against opponents that do not have armor. They're very effective if you manage to keep them out of close quarters combat, but when they do manage to get themselves into close quarters combat, they do do a lot better than quite a lot of the ranged units of other nations. One of the best things about the Quarrelers is that because they're using crossbows that have a little bit of an arc to them, they're quite proficient at shooting over your front line of dwarves. Other dwarves, however, decide to forego the crossbow to be able to get a handgun. These guys are called the Thunderers, and their missiles are armor-piercing, which makes them a lot better at picking through heavily armored orcs. Unfortunately, their range is a lot shorter than that of the Quarrelers, and so you're not going to be able to start dishing out the pain until your opponents start to close the distance. There is something, however, immensely satisfying about loading up a load of Thunderers and blasting your opponents into smithereens. If the idea of crossbows and handguns sounds a bit generic for you, then maybe the Iron Drakes are more your kind of thing. These are dwarves with flamethrowers. They're absolutely fantastic at taking out weak armor, but they're awful against heavily armored opponents. And just take a look at this. These savage black orcs aren't going to be too happy as they're roasted one by one. Look at this, this whole unit pretty much just lost. Iron Drakes, however, do have a couple of weaknesses. Number one, their range is very short indeed, and so they can't fire pretty much until they can see the whites of the eyes of their enemies. And also, their unit size is tiny. They only start with 18 dwarves in each one of their units. So that's not even close to the 75 dwarves that you get in some 
of the Dwarven units. The Dwarves don't get any enormous units, for example the Greenskins Giant, but one thing that they do have is a ranged counter for large units. Look at these Iron Drakes with a Troll Hammered Torpedo. They're armoured, they've got armour piercing missiles, but unfortunately they do have a very low rate of fire. But just look how this Giant is getting absolutely massacred before he even gets into combat with the Iron Drakes. And so look no further than the Iron Drakes if you need to take down a Giant. The Dwarves have some of the best artillery in the game. This is the Grudge Thrower, which is focused on anti-infantry. It has exceptionally long range and has a high impact, but again is very vulnerable when they manage to get into melee combat. If however, if you're planning on taking out larger opponents, then the cannon might be more your thing. And I just absolutely love the modeling on the Dwarven artillery. My personal favorite artillery, however, is the Organ Gun, a multi-barreled cannon which has much worse range than a standard cannon. Cannon, but of course you get to fire a barrage of shots that just completely decimate enemy lines. They're also armor piercing so they're pretty much equally as effective against heavily armored opponents as not. One of the key ways to amplify the effectiveness of your short range artillery is to use a master engineer. The master engineer has an ability called ballistics calibration. What this will do is in a small area around him when you click it, it will boost the rate of fire and also the accuracy of the guns. And so this means that for short range artillery such as the organ gun, a quick bit of a boost just before they reach the melee combat can be immensely satisfying. And don't forget as well that you can always enter first person combat if you want to kill specific orcs on the enemy team. Oh, that one made them run away. However, if that wasn't spectacular enough for you, then maybe the flame cannon is more your thing. Flame cannons are even shorter range than the organ guns, but even more devastating. Flame cannons are very useful at burning entire enemy units to a crisp before they've even managed to reach melee combat. And it's pretty much the most devastating artillery in the game. But of course, you have to deal with the fact that it is very short range. But there is something very satisfying about seeing multiple greenskin units being cooked to a crisp. <laughs> Dwarves are the masters of engineering and so it's no surprise that they have invented the gyrocopter. There are three different gyrocopters in Total War Warhammer. Your standard gyrocopter, a gyrocopter with a brimstone gun which makes it effective at piercing enemy armor, and also there is the gyro bomber. All of the gyrocopters do have bombs available to them and so if you position yourself over an enemy unit and then mouse over the gyrocopter bomb, you can time it to cause mass destruction to the enemy lines. However, the standard gyrocopter and the gyrocopter with a brimstone gun only carry two bombs and so you'll want to use the gyro bomber if you want to inflict maximum devastation. Check out this, bigger bombs, more bombs, that means more dead gobbos. One thing I will say however is that it's quite tricky to micromanage this, so hopefully you've got your battle lines all drawn out and you've got your artillery predetermined what they're going to be shooting at, because micromanaging these gyro bombers at least for me, was quite tricky. And so that about sums up all of the different dwarf units. I think they are probably the best race at long range, and not many of my enemies manage to get into close quarters combat, where they're also very resilient when you manage to get there. My campaign playthrough of the dwarves was a lot easier than that of the greenskins, and that's because they're just so darn resilient in melee combat. You can quite often take out opponents that outnumber you two or three to one. And before they even get into melee range, your awesome artillery, thunderers and quarrelers just devastate the enemy lines. And so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video or maybe it was just useful to you. If it was, please consider giving it a like down below. It really helps the channel out and stay tuned because I'm going to be doing the same thing, hopefully for the Empire and the Vampire accounts. So as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.